Hey guys, it's Sarthak from FTC Team 9794, wizards.exe. Um, in this video, uh, the next part in our vision spellbook for this year, I'm going to talk about how you can use Doge ZV to detect the Sky Stone, um, especially, uh, which is especially useful during the autonomous period. So this builds off what we did in the previous video where we um, installed Doge ZV into our Android Studio project very briefly and quick. So if you haven't watched that video, please do that before proceeding to go through the steps in this one. But if you've done that, you're all set to go. So I'm just going to start out by opening the same Android Studio project I had in the last video. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new uh, class or a new op mode. And I'm just going to call it Skystone Detection Op Mode. And um, we're not actually going to write any uh, code by ourselves. Um, one of the things is Doge CV developers have created an example op mode for us, which we can um, get online. So it's um, at this GitHub repository. Um, we'll put the link in the description in the video below so you guys can access it easily. Um, but what we can do is um, we can go ahead and just copy, or we can go ahead and actually download the zip file for this. So it's going to do a quick download. Um, we're going to have to open up our file explorer, and um, what we're going to have to do is, um, hold on, let me drag my file explorer over. Um, we're going to have to extract the file and copy and paste it into our Android project. So I'm just going to go over here to my downloads folder. Yep, there's the zip file we just downloaded. And extract all. You can just extract it um, into your downloads folder. It shouldn't matter too much. So that's what I'm going to do. So you'll see it creates a new folder right over here. And there we go. That's our example class. So actually, uh, you don't actually need this um, example op mode. That's my bad. So you can go ahead and delete that. But uh, what you want to do is you'll want to copy this file. You want to copy this file. Uh, I think I already pressed Control Z, so I should be good. Oh, there we go. Okay, copy. Then we can go back into Android Studio and paste that into our team code package. There we go. We can just leave it like that. So this is our Skystone Detector example class that we're going to test out. So before we run the code, I'm just going to walk through the um, steps that we have to go through in order to get this done. So um, what we're going to do is just so we have um, two uh, main variables that we're keeping track of. The first is the Skystone detector. Um, that's the detector built for you guys by the Doge CV developers um, to help you identify the Skystone. And I can show you over here. The Skystone is going to be different than a regular stone just because the yellow, uh, regular stone is just yellow, whereas the Skystone has this little black uh, Vuforia Vision target on there. So we have to be able to distinguish those two separately. So that's why we have separate detectors for the, each of them. So we're going to be talking about the Skystone detector in this video. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is we just have to um, initialize the ca OpenCV camera um, object that we're going to be using. So we just get the hardware map information over here. And we're going to pass that into the um, phone cam variable, which is the OpenCV camera object. Um, after that, we just open up the um, we open up the um, stream or the connection to the camera device. Then we have to um, give the camera the detector that we're running. So we initialize our Skystone detector over here, and then we pass that into our um, OpenCV uh, camera object. Uh, then we set the stream so we can see it on the driver station phone, and then we're all set to go. So that's um, that's where we press um, wait for us to press play, and then it's going to show us a bunch of information over here, which I'll get into, um, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, there are a couple options if you have a gamepad available um, for you guys. So the first one, just if you press A on your uh, gamepad, it's going to stop the stream um, from the images fr showing from the camera. Um, that just uh, closes it on your um, driver station phone. And there are, other, are a couple other options down here, um, but those won't be too relevant to what we're doing um, in this video. Um, so the last thing I'm just going to do is I'm just going to give this uh, op mode a name. So I'm just going to call it um, Skystone Detector Op Mode. 
and just you can keep it in that group doge cv so this should be all set and you can guys can download this onto your robot controller phone um now i mentioned this in the previous video but i'm just going to emphasize it again um uh, if we go back to our doge cv library um on the github repository so i'm just going to google doge cv um i'll just go to this link straight straight up uh we, i mentioned this at the end of the video but what you're going to want to do uh, before you can use your robot controller app with doge cv installed um, you have to download a file um, it should be it should have the same name as this let's see right over here the lib opencv native.so file so you want to make sure you download that and put it in the first folder um, like I showed in the previous video in this vision spellbook. So just make sure you have that. Um, you can get, again, you can get the link to that file um, in the installation instructions right over here in the Doge CV repository. Uh, but if you've done that, you're all good to go. So you can download that onto your robot controller. And I'm just going to show you guys a quick sample of what you should be seeing um, on your robot controller phone, as well as the information you should be getting back on your driver station. So over here, I have my robot controller and driver station phone. So I have my Skystone detector off mode over here. And um, hold on, let me just get my setup going. And I'm just going to initialize that. And what you're going to see is you should see on your robot controller phone, the stream start to um, show up on your um, uh, on your robot controller screen. Now. Your image should be a lot smoother than what you're seeing on my screen. Just because I'm doing a wireless connection, it's a little bit laggy. But you should be getting a pretty smooth um, uh, image rate, uh, good uh, frames per second. Mine's hovering around 20 right now. Um, you can see the details in the bottom left corner of the screen. But go ahead and press play. And you're going to see a whole bunch of information um, showing up on the screen. So I think the two most piece important pieces of information are the X and Y. That's just my opinion, but so you can use that to identify where the sky stone is. So we can see that when the sky stone is on the left hand side of the screen, we have a relatively low X value. But when I drag the camera over this way, um, whoops, let me back up a little bit. When I drag the camera over this way, the X value and Y value are increasing. So you can see that it's identifying the sky stone, but then when you move it back and forth, especially the X value, that one changes. Um, so if the X value is low, you might be able to say that the sky stone is on the left. If it's somewhere around maybe 100-ish, you could say it's in the center. And if you move it all the way over, it's closer to 200 um, or like 190, 200. You could say the sky stone's on the right. So you can use uh, that uh, X value information to actually identify the position of the sky stone. And then your robot um, can navigate to that sky stone depending on which position it is. Now, I can't exactly tell you how your robot's going to do that because it differs on each robot um, on its own. But you can use the X information, the X coordinate, to make a decision um, in which direction or which set of movements you're going to do to get to that target position. Um, so some of the other pieces of information you have on the screen are the Y value. That might be useful. Um, and you have a bunch of information about the camera uh, um, information. Whoops. I'll get into how you can change that in a second, um, but you have a bunch of information regarding the camera. So you have the frame count, the frames per second, um, and a couple other pieces of information that might be useful for any debugging um, issues that you have or any um, explanations you're looking for. So that's also some useful information. Now, you probably just saw um, I accidentally touched my robot controller screen, and that changed the image, the stream that we're showing on here. So. If I double tap, or if I just press this once, it shows the negative of the image or the uh, mask, I believe. And then when you tap it one more time, it goes back to the normal uh, view. But then if you tap it again, it removes all the contours and the um, over uh, the overlaying it's doing on the phone camera stream, where it's showing the edges and the blobs that are being detected. It just shows the normal camera frame, which can make it easy to... Um, identify just to see what the camera is actually seeing without seeing all of this other stuff um, on the screen. But e despite uh, whatever mode you have this set to on your um, robot controller phone stream, um, 
the X and Y information will update the same regardless. So it's still running, even though in this case, you might not see the labels and the contours being drawn on the screen, but um, the process is still ongoing. So using that op mode, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it. Um, using that op mode, you should be able to get a sky stone detector up and running for your team. And then you can actually incorporate that into the autonomous uh, portion um, or your autonomous programs by again saying, uh, what's the X location of the sky stone? And based on that, is it small? Is it somewhere around 100 or is it somewhere around 200? You can say whether it's left, center or right. And then based on that information, you can say, I have to do this set of motions or this set of motions or this set of motions that you predefined um, for your robot to go through um, during the autonomous period. Um, but that wraps uh, that about wraps up this video. Um, hopefully you're able to understand how to um, use a Skystone detector um, example op mode and um, access the uh, information relative um, relating to uh, the Skystone that's identified. So we initialized all of our um, OpenCV and camera stuff over here. And then we accessed information like the um, X value, the Y value, which you can see those statements over here. It's uh, skystone detector dot get screen position dot X and uh, dot Y for the Y position. And you can see all the camera information that we might use for debugging if you have any problems um, over here. But that it's relatively simple if you just follow these steps. Um, so it should make it really easy for your team to incorporate this into your autonomous program. You just have to follow the same initialization and the same um, ways of accessing the data over here. Um, in the next video in this um, Vision Spellbook series, we'll be getting more into how you can use the second detector that's available to FTC teams in Doge CV, which is just detecting a stone um, without the sky stone target, which can be used in a variety of different ways in this year's game. But we'll get into that in the next video. If you guys have any questions, uh, please make sure to ask us in the comments, or you can also send us an email at wizards.exe at gmail.com. Uh, please don't forget to like the, to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like us to see, uh, if you'd like to see any other videos that we haven't put out yet, um, just make sure to comment or email us um, at our uh, email account. Um, hopefully you're able to understand how to get this up and running on your robot controller phone, and it should be very helpful for you in the autonomous um, section. Thank you guys for watching.